Hello, and um, welcome to this DVD extra. I suppose it should be called Meet Carl Pilkington 2. We did a little bonus feature for my politics DVD um, where, we, where we talked about um, politics, obviously, and that sort of introduced you to the world. That, that was put on um, YouTube and it's had like a million hits. So I think, you know, it's time we did that again. But um, around science, a, a, a subject that, if possible, you know less about than you did about politics, in a way. I reckon I do know more about science. What is science? Uh, it's in everything, isn't it? You can't avoid science. It's interesting because people who believe in God say that about God. He's in everything. No, no, but this is, this is like proper. This is, you know, if people want to believe in God, that's all right. But science is, without science, you wouldn't have any of this. Well, it's almost the antithesis, isn't it? That if you believe in the magic of, you know, God and all his impossibilities and theological and, uh, you know, that's, science looks at hard empirical facts. See, all that went right off my head. I'm into science. I'm into the weird science. Um, you know, I like the fun of it. There's a lot of fun in science. Let's start at the beginning. The Big Bang. Okay, here, what, what do you think of this? An atom, right, is mostly nothing. One analogy is it's like a fist in the Albert Hall. So an atom, the size of the Albert Hall, the matter part of it, okay, the nucleus would be a fist. The rest is space, okay? That's one thing. With a fly buzzing around it as the electron. Just a, a, yeah, that's a charge. Now, when we look at it on that scale, it's easy to understand that all matter that exists, everything in this universe was once in the space many, many times smaller than an atom. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, no one, most people watching this are going, I don't get that, my head hurts, what else is on? Everything in the universe could be crammed into the, the tiniest thing imaginable. And that was sitting there in the beginning of time. Right? 15 billion years ago. Right? And then it expanded into a universe in a few minutes. But was the minutes then? No. So we don't know then. We don't know how long it took. Not that it matters, I'm not bothered. It's here now. And that's what I'm saying to you. It's all amazing that, the Big Bang thing. I've said to you, was it a Big Bang? Or was it just because there was nothing else there to drown out the noise? At the end of the day, it's that whole thing, isn't it? The noise. Was there even a noise if no one's there to hear it? Don't be worrying about all that stuff. Leave it to Stephen Hawking to do it. Of course he can sit there and think about it. He's got nothing else to do. Let him get online. Oh, it's great to think. I like thinking. But my world's too busy. I've always got to be doing other things. He sat there just thinking. I'd be the same if I was in his shoes. Exactly the same, thinking. But he's, he's, he's done that much thinking, he's thinking about things now he doesn't need to think about. Pack it in, Steve. Have a rest. <laughs> Play Pac-Man. Do, do whatever, just do something else. Stop worrying about the Big Bang. <clears throat> he's wasting his life thinking about something that doesn't matter. We don't need to know the answer. He's wasting his life thinking about something that doesn't matter. Good. It, it doesn't matter, does it? In your life of things that matter, where would you put the Big Bang? No, but then, but then no, where do you draw the line? We're not here for long enough. Well, we're not here for long enough. But then enough. nothing matters then, does it? So yeah, we, it does, yeah. What, what does? Matter. What matters? Well, keeping people happy. Okay. You know, uh, looking after people. So, so keeping them happy could be giving them life-saving drugs or feeding a, um, a starving world or letting someone become mobile that was otherwise yeah. immobile. And that's, that's fine. But you're talking about space. When did it start? Where does it end? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, it goes on and on and on and on. We know that. 
atoms, they're not getting in the way. Stop worrying about them. I read something about some scientists trying to smash one up. What for? They're not in the way. If they were big and I kept bumping into them, I'd smash them up. Break them down. Gravel. Make gravel out of them. <laughs> Make them so tiny that they're only gravel. No, but what, what I'm saying is it's not an issue. And right. there's loads of problems in the world. There is loads of problems. You may mention them all, the starvation, all that. And someone's faffing about with an atom. Mm. That isn't going to sort anything out. Some people say mathematics is the tool of science. You need maths to do anything in science. Yeah, of precision. I believe that. I believe that. You do. I like doing DIY. I told you, there's a lot of maths involved. Accuracy. Right. That's fine. Okay. Just taking it slightly even more accurate than than DIY. Um, micro surgery. Um, putting a man on the moon. The figures had to be pointless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, you see, if we didn't have the numbers, that wouldn't have happened. But all we've done is create something else we didn't need because of something else we've got. We didn't have to put man on the moon. What right. was he doing? What did he do? Nothing. Has he been back? No, he hasn't. He didn't enjoy it. No one, no one else has gone up there. The only reason, the thing that I've thought of recently when I thought that would be good to go into space again is to get rid of rubbish. That's what I'd do. They're always going on about landfill and everything. It's not good. We can't get rid of all this. Shoot it up there. Stick it into space. It's mm. expanding. There's loads of space. Mm. Stick all the shit up there. Don't be sending a man up. I, I, I heard that one of them astronauts knocking a golf ball about on the moon. Leave your golf clubs at home and take some shit up with you and tip it. <laughs> yeah, but do you know how much fuel is needed to get a kilogram of something up out of the Earth's atmosphere and into space? He had a golf club with him, a I golf know. ball. Okay, but how much, how much rubbish do you think we can really get rid of? As much as you want. But how much fuel does it take? I mean, there's, it's a matter of economics as well. Think of the fuel that... Were, the fuel that would take a bin bag full up into space would far outweigh that bin bag being on Earth. But they keep going into space now. They're not going to the moon. They knock around space messing with satellites. Right. Less astronauts, a couple of bin bags. Chuck some shit up there. And what's good with it is it won't break up. It'll just keep circling. And up there then, space isn't space anymore. It'll be like a museum. Because there'll be old stuff from years ago. At the moment, we're not, we, we don't save anything, do we? It's all about recycling. Mm. Everything's destroyed. There's no evidence of the past. Mm. Go into space, it'll be like Antiques Roadshow of shit from the years gone by. Right. I'd like to see this episode. That's mental, Carl. It's not mental. It is mental. How would you get the rubbish up there? In the rocket. Yeah, but you don't know anything. Do you it's know how much there. fuel... It takes to but burn... But they're going up anyway. I'm just saying, at least if they're going up there, do something. Do something different. It's space. There's nothing in space. Well, let's put something there. That's what we do as humans. We don't like plain space. We fill it. That's what we do. So just chuck some shit into space. That's all I'm saying. If you're up there, get rid of a few bin bags. Brilliant. That's space. There's nothing... Don't you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing. Yeah, but it's mental. It's 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 everything's wrong with it. It's a ter once again a terrible flawed theory. Time machines. They're funny. That's science. Well, we're sort of going into the future, aren't we? All the time, by well, every definition. Day, every day we are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm talking about people want to do big leaps, don't they? Yeah. I met a scientist once, you know, um, that old fellow I met, proper scientist. He said he'd love to get in a time machine. Patrick Moore? No, um, Wolf. Heinz Wolf. All right. I met him, he said, I'd love a time machine. Where would he go, back or Yeah, forward? back. He said yeah. he wanted to go back, because he asked me, he said, where do you want to go? And I said, oh, uh, I think I picked a holiday that I had. So you went back five or six years? Because I knew exactly what I'd be going back to. I enjoyed that week. I'd be going back. I wouldn't have to pay for that holiday. I've already paid for it. It's not like I'm turning up and someone's going, get out, you shouldn't be here. I was there. So you're going back because you reckon you'll save 400 quid? Well, it's 250. It was a bargain. In Mallorca, a villa, swimming pool, three bedrooms. That's what you'd use a time machine for? 
I'm just saying, why do people always have to jump so far So back? hold on then, let me get this straight. Are you going back and it's you now and you've had that five years and you're loving it, oh, I remember doing this, or are you going back and just reliving it like a memory and no one knows the difference and nor do you? It's like you just do it and then you have to... No, no, I, everybody there doesn't know I've gone back in time. Right, but so you've come me. from the future then. Yeah, but they don't know that. No, I know, but you're in your body then, you look like you did then, but actually it's Carl five years on. Yeah, but I'm having the same holiday and I'm going to enjoy it more. So you're not coming back with going like, oh, Rita, go and get that checked out. No. And no? I just have a holiday. But the weird thing is, this professor bloke, he wanted to go back. He said he wanted to go back when, like, cavemen were knocking about to see how they sort of mooched about and how they survived. See, that to oh. me is more interesting than going back on a holiday I've already had. I'll be honest. You wouldn't go back to being a caveman. You'd eat it. You'd be going, oh, God, send me back. And they go, no, no, you've got to stay here for a bit. It's an expensive machine. About 10,000 years. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand that. I wouldn't want to go forward either. So because... when you went back, so, what, so suppose you went back to caveman times, right? You, you are you, right? You'd fit in fine. I'd be brilliant. Yeah. I'd be the king. Maybe. No, I would. Right, what would you do then? They'd you... like you said, they'd be they go, they go, they go, they go, <laughs> 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 Slightly different, isn't it? No, it's not. It's exactly the same. We haven't changed bodily. I've got a pair of pants on. Right. So you go back naked, so you'd fit in. No. What? Because I'd look all pale and. No, no, no. You wouldn't go back naked. Or they go. They would take your pants off. The first thing they'd do if you went there with pants, they would rip your pants off. No, they wouldn't. They would. They you wouldn't. can't go back with pants on. You've got to go back naked. It's summer. They're walking around naked. Why would you go with pants on? Before you get in the time machine, you'd have to take your pants off. No, because I want to come across like I'm something from the future. Okay. So I walk in. They're going, whoa. What are they doing? What do they say? They just can't believe it. They're going, what's going on? What do you say? I say, I'm just visiting. What are you wearing then? What are you Jean, wearing? Jean, this. I've gone like this. Okay. They would definitely want to see... No, they wouldn't. They would, to they wouldn't, because they're sick of seeing it. To them, it's like being on a nudist beach. They're no longer looking at cock and bollocks and tits and arse. They're seeing it every day. To them, it isn't weird. To me, I'll probably be looking at them. Put some pants on. I don't understand why they couldn't do that, really. They, I think they did the wheel before the pants. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, I think they did. I think they did. I think they did. Biology. The life sciences. Isn't it amazing that we're here? That anything is here? That we're having a chat now in front of these cameras for a DVD extra? And we started off as a single cell blob, a little thing that had the right temperature in the right compound, the right minerals, ultraviolet. A little thing happened. This little nucleus, it was just a, just a cell, okay? But I don't like thinking about that. And then it divided, then it... Yeah. Got a skin, and then... Yeah. I don't want to know, you know, when people get in touch from Friends Reunited, I go, that was 20 years ago, I don't want to know. Right. So I certainly don't want to know about 30 million years ago. Okay. I want my little time zone that I'm right. born, I live, and I die in. Okay. That's all I can worry about. It doesn't fascinate about. you at all. It doesn't fascinate it you at amazing, all. It is amazing, but it hurts your head, doesn't it? I don't the, the, like the, it. I don't just like by it. chance, something happened, uh, a genetic mutation, and then that, and that, and then that was chosen by nature. It worked. It survived. Okay? But certain things work, and they're not that impressive, like slugs. You always say, well, it's evolved. It hasn't evolved. Okay. We share about 70% of our genetic material with a slug. What, 70%? Well... What, what 70% has that got, that I've got? It's got 70%. I've coughed up stuff that looks like a slug. If that's a 70% you're talking about, but there's nothing else, nothing in a slug. There is. Nothing. You share, you share DNA with an onion. 
I've heard that. That's the roundness of the head, probably. I'm telling you that the slug has about 70% of the same genetic material as the human species. We're that close. We're that close. All the hard work, all the hard work was done then, in terms of, like, getting it right. A slug got it right. A slug is as evolved as us. It's perfect. It's not perfect. Why? Okay. Definitely not perfect. Why? Why isn't it perfect? It's just not great. I've, I've, I've had to deal with slugs a lot when they were, like, blocking up my shower. Right. There's a gang of them in the tube. How can they be uh, as evolved as me? What are they doing? Uh, up there. Uh, Just all mush. Mushified. <laughs> mushified! Right, talk me through it. What happened? Just was having a shower and the shower basin filled up. Right. Like, What's going on here? Yeah. So I got a plunger. Right. Sort of bits of black stuff. I mean, what is this? I had to unscrew the, the, the plug hole bit. Couldn't quite get down there. Yeah. To take the tiles off the side of the shower thing. Right. Got in there, unscrewed it all, got the pipe. Just slugs all in there. All sat in there, blocking it up. Don't right. know how they got in there. But that's what I'm saying to you. They don't know what they're doing. What they're doing, knocking about in there. Get out! <laughs> now, what are they doing? I don't know to this day what they do. I watch insects, they, you know I like insects. They survive. That's what they do. They're chosen by nature. Yeah, but they nature. don't know. There's, there's another one. There's loads of insects knocking about the house. There's a spider in the outside shed. It's not an insect, nor is a slug. Slug is a mollusk, spider is an arachnid. All right. Okay. The spider's in the cupboard outside. Right. I'm not joking. It's been there now for about two years. Right. Could be three. Okay. Same one. It's quite big. Right. Just sits there in the corner. Right. I go in. I smash its web up. Why? Because I don't want it there. Right, fine. I don't want to kill a spider. No. Right. But I'm sort of saying, I'm wrecking your house. If you move, there's no problem, move. I go back, it's built its web again. Just right. sat there like that. Doing nothing. <laughs> what is the point? <laughs> well, it's not doing nothing, is it? Well, it's building its house every it's time hunting. I wreck it. It's hunting. It's not even doing that. Well, it is. That's, what it ha that's how it does it. It's made a, it's made a web and things fly into it. Then it wraps them up, sucks the juice out. Right. But for what? To then sit in this shed? It's what are you doing? Existence. What Why doesn't it go? But you're eating. You're staying in your flat. You want to go back to Mallorca five years ago. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, well, it depends. I've been. Who thinking. knows? Who knows what's going to happen in another billion years? You'll be the slug. The human race could be the slugs. There could be this amazing being that, that, that evolved from us going, what are they doing? People go, well, you know, 70% of their genetic material. You don't know how it's going to go. You stood on the shoulder of giants. You stood on a few slugs, you told me, in your flat. But we share our ancestry with those slugs. We are related to slugs. I have never watched Who Do You Think You Are? And they've gone, they've gone to your family tree. Do you know uh, Terry the Slug? He's a great uncle of yours. We don't need to know where we've come from. And nobody would want to hear that either on that program. You would not want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but you're... It's nothing to do with us. <sighs> oh. It's happened. It's all, all an accident. But it's a matter of degrees. Your brother. Right. Okay. Very close to you. Your cousin. I haven't seen him for about 12 years. <laughs> okay, genetically speaking. Couldn't get closer. Okay, it's the closest you can be—a brother, a son, a mother—to accept, and let you know, except a clone, an identical twin. Okay, so cousin, a bit less, great cousin, da -da -da. bloke round the world, da -da -da. chimp, marmot, mouse, bird. I don't know what you're doing now. You're just saying words at me. What's a marmot? <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you're related to him. You're related to him. With all our evolution, now we can sit around doing Sudoku and inflaming our mind and inventing art and stuff. Um, so I want to. I want to use to use you know scientific method. 
Let's use a bit of logic, okay? I'll give you a couple of conundrums because I want to see how, how you've evolved, okay? Um, there's two children sitting on a bench. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Billy? Yeah. Okay. There's a boy and a girl. Okay? They're the, they're the kids on the bench. Yeah. There's a boy and a girl sat on a bench. Yeah. The blonde-haired child... Yeah. ...says... I'm a girl. Right. The brown-haired child says, I'm a boy. At least one of the children are lying. Which one's the boy and which one's the girl? But what else can I see there? Can you I tell by the way they look or am I blind? No, you, no, you can't see. I'm blind. Yeah, you can't see. I'm just, I'm telling you. There's still the information you need. And they actually sound, I can tell by voice. No, or... no, no, you can't. No, 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 you can't. I'm telling you, okay? So hang on. Say, Two say children sitting your... on the bench, right? You've come to me, I haven't seen these. No, no. I have not heard them. You've come no. to me and yeah. said, I've just been in the park. Yeah, yeah. Say again, I've just been in the park. Yeah. And I've seen yeah. a lad and a girl. One had brown hair, one had blonde hair. Yeah. The, the, the blonde-haired child said, I'm a girl. Yeah. The brown-haired child said, I'm a boy. At least one of them is lying. Which one's the girl and which one's the boy? I don't know. Well, think. I don't want to. Why don't you want to? I don't want to work it out. It's a very easy one. Just think through the scenarios in your head. I'm a girl. Who said that? The brown-haired one. I'm a no, girl. the blonde-haired one said I'm a girl. One of them is lying. Yeah, at least one of them is lying. The lad. So just the just the boy is lying. Oh, well, both of them. Are. Well, they've got to be both lying, haven't they? Why? Because there's a boy and a girl there. One of them saying they're a girl, one saying they're a boy. Yeah, so if one of them's lying... But they're both lying. They have to be both lying. So the blonde-haired kid's a boy. Right. See? But what, 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 are we, what are you doing with that? Because it trains the mind to think logically, to think through it. That's, that's imposing a scientific method. about you it's always it's always a, an element of, of humor or comedy even in your mother's funeral I'm a you... dad's yeah my mum and dad's funeral we were yeah. mucking around um, it, even when um, my dad my mum died first um, and um, it was a long horrible illness it was uh, it was lung cancer it was lung cancer and it was it was dreadful I mean the worst situation you can imagine it was dreadful um, so there was a certain amount of um, you know, relief afterwards. She was out of pain and everything. How long did but, she have it for? Oh, uh, a year. A year. It was. It was. Anyway, it was. It was dreadful. I remember. Yeah, it was. It was dreadful. Um, but uh, you know, when we were organising the funeral, um, the uh, the vicar said to my brother, "And tell me something about your mother. What was what was she?" And my brother, just mucking around, said, uh, "She was a keen racist." <laughs> <laughs> that right. And the vicar went, oh, I can't put that. He went, I'll put gardening then. And then he gave the vicar the wrong names of the kids, so when he read that, we all laughed. The wrong names. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> at, my, at my dad's funeral, I went prepared. I got loads of nieces and nephews. And I went, and they all started sort of crying, and I handed out tissues, and then they all started laughing, because I'd written things like, stop snivelling <laughs> and whinging. <laughs> and, so they, and the vicar was looking at us laughing during his funeral. <laughs> we explained to him afterwards. But, yeah, no, that's, ex that's exactly what, it, that's exactly what humour's for. Yeah. T t tell me about Derek. Derek is, is uh, your new series. Yeah. Uh, and, or your latest series. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, he's a quite different guy. He's very different from David Brent. Yeah. Um, office, uh, it's funny because I, st I still deal with sort of like, you know, flawed characters mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I suppose sort of these are more outsiders. But the, the, the flaws of the characters I usually delved into with like people like David Brent or Andy Millman, mm -hmm. um, it was their own fault. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it was it was ego or ambition or jealousy. Mm. Whereas with these guys, it's superficial stuff. It's like bad hair, a mm. shuffle, a, a funny voice, of you know. Um, so uh, and and that was because I wanted it to be superficial and something important could come along and trump it all, which was kindness mm. or compassion or caring. And I put it against a, um, an old people's home because um, I always try and write about what I know. Um, uh, and about six of my um, family, uh, my mum, my sister, my sister-in-law, her kids now, they worked in care homes. So I sort of had that backdrop. And again, they'd come in with stories that were really, some were really sad and some were really funny and some were really sweet. And I remember first people first watching Derek, they'd say, is it a, is it a comedy or a drama? Mm. And I went, well, what's your life? You know, it's a bit of everything, isn't it? You're doing a new movie, writing right? yeah. yourself. I yeah. see you like that. Yeah, called yeah. Life on the Road, and it's yeah. David Brent trying I'm to be a pop star. I'm trying to get to the Derek. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've just ruined your flow. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I had this sorry. wonderful Carry on. Sorry, talk. I'm sorry, if, Freddie. Are you in charge? Well, I used to be. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Can you get what me you a beer? Because they said they wouldn't this allow like beer. This is like a band. Can we have some beer? <laughs> He's in charge. See. <laughs> Freddie, you're I in charge. Claim it back. I'm so sorry. It's your. It's yours. I have another show next. Do the intro. We can cut this we're, bit out. We'll pretend. We'll pretend there's the... Yes. Yeah. OK. We're so we've got to watch a clip from Derek now. <laughs> They're laughing, they know, see? <laughs> this is never going to cut together. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cut straight from your interview <laughs> to, to this clip. Yeah, I know. <laughs> your what? terrible trauma, yeah. and then you go, <laughs> anyway, Derek. <laughs> it's it. Uh, it's... <laughs> the number... Honestly... <laughs> The number of shows I've done where I'm going on to do something about a comedy or a children's book, and the person before me is just a, a, the, one of the first one of the first shows I ever did. It was like a daytime show, and they said, "Coming up next, the hilarious Ricky Gervais and his funny menagerie flanimals." But first, why do teenagers self harm? <laughs> <laughs> and then, there's this, well, and I had to go out there. It was just a dreadful. It, it always happens. It always happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> you did it on purpose, didn't you? They got, they got kidnapped on purpose, just to ruin... <laughs> take a look, take a look at this. This, this. this is a clip from Derek. I goes, oh, whoops, sorry. And people goes, oh, don't worry about it, Derek. Ask them. But if I drops a baby or sits on it, whoops, oh. sorry, isn't it? No. <laughs> I actually think like that. When someone says, do you want to hold it? I just yeah. think, was, no, wait, no, what if I drop it? You know, so, uh, yeah. So how, how are you with kids? You, you chose not to have kids. Yeah, but I've got, I've got loads of nieces and nephews and they're having kids now. And so how that's, are that's you with them? Are you, are you good A working with class family. I'm a great, great uncle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's not like it's... They're like mice. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I come home for Christmas and they're through the pockets and everything. <laughs> Coughing on you. I'm always ill after I visited my family. <laughs> Thirteen kids. Got... <coughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> I lose weight after Christmas, where I've, I've got some sort of illness. <laughs> no, I love, I love, I love kids. Other people's. I love other people's. <laughs> you don't want to do you can play with them and go right. That's enough. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one final question because we've been talking about uh, about uh, her getting married. Are you ever getting married? Because you've been um, with the same woman, like, for... Yeah, 30 years. Well, 30 we are sort of married. 30 years? Yeah. I was 18, 30, okay, yeah. so he's... But we are sort of married. It's just, you know, um, mm. uh, I, I mean, I, I don't really see the point in a ceremony. You know, we, we share everything. Everything's in both our names. It's, you know, I don't want our families to meet. That wouldn't work. <laughs> 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 That'd be like Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we've got loads of toasters. We don't need to get married. <laughs> Ricky, it's, it's great to have you here. We're going to have another guest on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Here is Ricky Gervais. <laughs> now, when I'm at home, I watch hours and hours of Discovery Channel and History Channel. Hours, Discovery Channel, History Channel. Ask me anything about sharks and Nazis. Um, <laughs> round of applause there for... There's not, they're, not, they're not as bad as a lot of people make out. Um, sharks, I mean. <laughs> Nazis, awful. Uh, sharks, brilliant. Amazing creature. Okay. It can hone in 
on a floundering fish, right? Through the vibrations that it picks up through electrical impulses, through sensors in its flank. It doesn't need its eyes, but contrary to popular belief, their eyes are very good, okay? But it can smell and taste the slightest human secretion of blood and sweat, one part in a billion from a mile away. A shark would have found Anne Frank like that. <laughs> Nazis, rubbish. <laughs> I've been to her house, it's tiny. <laughs> Every day they went in. Okay, let's move on. Sarge, can we look upstairs today? <laughs> no, there's no one down here, move on. Sarge, what's that tapping? You have time to write a book, for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, it ends a bit abruptly, and no sequel. Lazy. No, but... Not a traditional subject for comedy, the old Holocaust. <laughs> but I will say something about the Holocaust, and I'm sticking my neck out here, but in my opinion, I blame Adolf Hitler. <laughs> he was the ringleader. Old Adolf. That name's died out, hasn't it? <laughs> he killed that dead, didn't he? No one's calling their kid Adolf nowadays. No little Adolfs going to school. Loads of Brads and Angelinas, but no... Look, you don't hear the teacher doing the register. Brad here, Angelina here, Adolf here. Uh, I do that quick so no one can take a picture of me doing that. Um, no, but... People make excuses for him. People say, uh, uh, oh, he was stupid, he was easily led, he didn't, he didn't mean that. What do you mean he didn't mean that? They say, oh no, he was influenced by the political philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, right? Because Nietzsche wrote this uh, paper um, talking about a, a superman. He, he said, not all men are born equal. And Hitler misinterpreted this and went way too far with it. And uh, <laughs> think of that. You're a great scholar. You've done this work and you get a call from the Führer. And the Führer goes, all right, Nietzsche. He goes, yeah, good, what do you want? He goes, just read your book. What do you think? Love it. <laughs> Love all that, man and Superman, not everyone's equal, kill all the Jews, sorry? <laughs> not everyone's equal, so kill all the Jews. I didn't like that. I read between the lines. I, I, I didn't mean that. That's terrible. Have you? You haven't been killing. You, you haven't been killing Jewish people, have you? What? <laughs> have you been killing Jewish people? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A few. How many? Six million? That's what I won't do anymore. Leave it. Leave it at six. That's terrible. I won't do anymore. Stay for dinner? Well, I will, but be careful in future. I will. Are you writing any other books? Well, I am, but I'm scared to tell you about it. I won't do anything. What's your new book called? My new book is called The Gypsies. Do we need it, Mum? <laughs> Cheers. No, don't applaud that. We shouldn't, we shouldn't talk about such things. It's not like we're in peace times now, is it? There's a, a little thing going on in a country called Iraq, which is not my favourite war. My favourite war is... Um, oh, so many. Um, they've got uh, good for different reasons. Uh, la 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 la. Um, oh, uh, um, Falklands. That's... Probably the Falklands, because um, we won that one, and uh, it was great. It was against uh, Argentina. Yeah, <laughs> weird. Um, we're going to war with Argentina. All right, okay, fair enough, yeah. Um, but <laughs> the reason it's my uh, favourite war is that it, it was a range war, and what that means is the Argentine guns could fire nine kilometres. The British guns could fire 17 kilometres. So we just parked our ships <laughs> 10 kilometers away 
and theirs were falling into the sea, and we were shelling the shit out of them. It's the war equivalent of holding a midget at arm's length. And he's flayed it, and you're just kicking him in the bollocks like that. Vietnam, best soundtrack. <laughs> Second World War, best ending. That had to be the end, that was a great finale, you couldn't follow that, could you? <laughs> People are worried about that, they go, oh, atomic energy, oh, it's bad, the effects are still being felt today, but, oh, it ended a war, and that's good. And it was discovered by Einstein, and he's a genius, and... In his 1903 paper, he said that light could be described as discrete bundles of energies that when irradiated onto an unstable... Ma what maniac thinks like that? Really? I'm not a doctor, but I think that's what turns Stephen Hawking's mad, too much thinking. Do you know what I mean? The universe is expanding. Of course it is, Stephen. Yeah, yeah, of course it is, yeah. Jeez, take a day off. Go for a walk. Not a walk, but I mean... Just, no. Oh... <laughs> Open a window. Watch a bit of TV. Robot Wars is on. You love that, don't you? <laughs> Greatest mind on the planet. <laughs> People say, oh, we should never go at Stephen Hawking. Oh, he's a genius. He's not a genius. He's pretentious. <laughs> Born in Oxford and talks with that fake American accent. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell! Never gets old. <laughs> Steve Corral is considered handsome. <laughs> think, think of that. It's uh, amazing. Rain Wilson. <laughs> you probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Corral did it all? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Corral? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pay. Idiotic thing to say. With six billion people on the planet, how are they all going to love one person? A lot of them do. I mean, look at the American said. version of The Office. Yeah, Every week. It. Was it 10 million viewers, I guess? 10 million people. Watching him. Tune in and see my name at the end of the credits. Watch it for him, though, don't they? Not really, no, because it wouldn't exist without me and he wouldn't exist without it. Where is he? Oh, there yeah, in the front row. Just... <laughs> Just in case you have to make a dash for it. <laughs> have you got it on you? I've heard you carry it around with you to get in restaurants and stuff. <laughs> I made you what? Don't look at me. I'm gone off road. Everyone's getting nervous now. There's nothing on the auto queue. I could do anything. This is live. I made you what you are, and I get nothing back. <laughs> Have you even been to see Ghost Town yet? No. I sat through Evan Almighty. Give me my Emmy. <laughs> Give me my Emmy. I'll come down there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me it. I'll tickle you. I don't care. I've got nothing to lose here. I'm a nobody here. Where is it? <laughs> yes, you have. Stop. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Give me it. Give me the Emmy. <laughs> Give me the Emmy. <laughs> Give me the Emmy. <laughs> Give me it. <laughs> Give me the... Thank you. <laughs> Right.
Right. Good. That's settled. Could you do what Ricky does? Oh, not in a million years. Why? No. Um, I think I would just get too skittish. Mm -hmm. I, but you I could am, play a Ricky Gervais character. Perhaps, but no. to actually go in front of people and... And offend I, them to their faces. I don't think I, I necessarily... It doesn't mean that I'm a better person. It just means <laughs> that I certainly don't have that kind of uh, guts. He, it's funny. He always makes fun of me. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Like, mm -hmm. before one of these award shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to mm -hmm. go after you with. Is that okay? And I'm like, of course. So he's, there is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. So you're, wow. all, you're all hard, aren't that's you? That's right. No, that's lovely. He's <laughs> such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award ceremony and say, I'm going to call you a prick in a minute, just well, to no. warn you. But if uh, yeah. I told him what I was going to say, you know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. You know, as I say, I don't <laughs> want him to have a bad day. You know, it's, no, it's not, I, I've got nothing against people. Do you, you like know? Steve Carell? He's great. He's fantastic. Um, he's good, because you know why? He's got, he's nearly handsome. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that. He's, he's got. He's, he's, he's like Bob Hope. If you look at him, he's chiselled. He's great, but he's got something. He's got beady eyes. Mm. He's good. I like him. I like. Him. That was a compliment, by the way. <laughs> he's very handsome. I mean, he's comedically handsome. He's not imposing. He's not. He's not bland. He's. Um, why are we going on about how good looking Steve Carell is? <laughs> what, what, what am I? Chop liver. <laughs> Hello, we're filming with Ricky Gervais and we're having a problem with the drilling. I wonder if you can... Like that's going to do anything. Yeah, you're filming... Stop. Oh, you're filming with Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Cut. Stop the drilling. He said the two magic words in Hollywood. Ricky Gervais. Oh, the drilling stop. Thanks very much. All right? <laughs>
shaving, by the way. Oh, I, I, want to film this. Great, I thought we are filming this. No, no, no. I have great I'm shaving bring, techniques. You're going to wait there, and then I was going to bring um, in. Oh, sorry. I thought I thought we were rolling. Hi. Right there, no. We're doing another take. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I I but wouldn't. aren't we just Didn't filming we? this? Huh? We're, we are filming this. Oh, we're, we are we're filming. Yeah. Yeah. I have to act? <laughs> this you want me to come in and act now? Yeah, yeah. What do we do? Do you mind if we film uh, you while you're putting on no, a bit of... No, Great, OK. It. I'm just going to take down a little bit of the redness. What redness? <laughs> no, it's true. It's on my nose, is that a little red? I thought there was something wrong with me. I had to go to a dermatologist. Yeah. Is, this, um, is this weird? Two men just talking about their skin condition while being filmed, being made up? Is that... That's all right, isn't it? You know, two men is as secure as, as, as we are. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's a problem. Maybe we're metrosexual. Are we? What's that? Yeah. That's, that's... that's a guy who's very involved with, with creams. <laughs> and <laughs> very moisturizing. A heterosexual, but he's, he takes very Absolutely. good care of himself, but good grooming. He thinks nothing of a, a Brazilian. And I like to be, I like to be <laughs> as spick and span down there as any, as any woman you'll care to me. I have to say, I haven't used the word Brazilian in my life. <laughs> Now, the onus is pretty much on you for most of this, isn't it? You know, you're the interviewer, right? Yeah. So I'm the, I'm the guy who should be really relaxed about this. Absolutely. I don't want to have to feel like I'm on a date here, right? Oh, the I'm not on a date. Just because I talked about Brazilians, that, yeah. that was... I wasn't bringing that up to, to no, fish no, no, for compliments. No, no, no. I mean, I... Know, I, I know. No. I'm going to give you a little chapstick. What's that? Chapstick for chaplets? No. I think that if you st uh, use that chapstick stuff, yeah. I think you'll, uh, you'll start getting chapped lips all the time. I really do. Because you assume that your lips are being moddy-coddled and they need to gather and be a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, thanks very much for doing this. The only reason I'm doing it is because it's in England. Sure. And nobody I know will be watching. So there's a great freedom to that. Right. I, I was hoping that... It's because you would... And also, me yes, and yeah, no, of course. Obviously, that has something to do with it, yeah. yeah. When I was doing stand-up, I would never let anybody come see me. I only wanted strangers in the audience. I couldn't stand it if I saw a face, and I, if, I, if I recognized the face. It would throw me. I, I uh, went to see um, some comedy um, last night. I sort of just snuck over to the, um, the comedy store on, really? on Sunset. I saw eight acts. Like, every single one of them, their catchphrase was, What the fuck? What the fuck? Right? <laughs> and they all talked about their ethnic parenting. It was, uh, it was like, if it was a yeah. Korean bloke, it was like, yeah. oh, my daddy goes, why do you want to go into comedy? The Jamaican, why do you want to go into comedy? It was just, it was like, just ch change the race. And then you say, what the fuck? Every single one of them. Can you say fuck on your show? <clears throat> yeah. You can? Yeah. Do, do you want to? No, do you? No, not this show. Oh, um... Extras. Extras, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we keep it down. I mean, yeah, it's, it, I, try, I try and keep my, my mind down. Yeah. Can I just um, remind you of a, a scene, uh, the, the opening of the restaurant, which was oh, like, yeah, an, yeah, yeah, well, right. like an yeah. opera of swearing. Yeah. Fuckhead, shit face, cocksucker, asshole, son of a bitch! Maybe one day I'll get a chance to do something good for somebody like that. Scum sucking motherfucking whore! Cock! Cock! Chisholm! Grandma! Cock! Bum! Fuck! Turd! Fart! Can't piss! Shit! Bugger! And balls! Damn it! Hell! Crap! Shit. You goddamn motherfucking bitch! Fuck you, you car wash cunt! Now, <laughs> car wash cunt is is yeah. poetry. That's that's she came up with that idea. Yeah. 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 What do you think about swearing in in comedy? I don't like to abuse it at all. I know just from doing stand up that it's the easiest way to get cheap and easy laughs. I think it can be funny. It definitely makes anything funnier. It does. There's no doubt about it. Once you once you inject a fuck into your speech, it makes it funnier. It gives it it gives it an emphasis and it gives it a shock. What did you have? I am afraid to say I had an ace high. Ace high. I know, but I just I got it. How could you not go in with an ace high? Oh, you cunt! What a cunt! I can't believe that you didn't go in with that. I I. I just Larry. thought that she. Oh, what a hand! That's a great hand for this game. Um. Wow. 
than out. When we're discussing um, things like, oh, what do, what do the audience expect or what do they want, don't, there's something in me that says I don't care. It's not up to them. It's not yeah. up to them. I'll do exactly what I want and... That you know, then you come. Yeah. And, if you if you didn't like it, I I, I don't care. Yeah, that's don't that's come and see me again. Don't I, ever come and see me again. I think as long that as, as you're I, an I just don't want to be judged. Approach. I really don't want to be judged. Well, so every year I get rid of I don't know ten or twenty percent, and I add, and so so it's every five years or four years. I don't I don't right. really keep track of it. Right. But I do feel like there are those core things. But you don't work like that. You like to create a show, I, and that's the show. I like a whole But those 200 show. shows you do, what did you say, 200 or 600? About 200. Okay, so by the end of that, that's an act. That's an act, and that's ready for HBO if, right. they, if they want it. And uh, bye. But you must be coming up with stuff like all the time. Yeah. And you, yeah. yeah. And you, but you, so you gradually evolve the act. You do new stuff. Yeah, but yeah. So I like he, to keep evolving it. Like Jack Welch ran GE. Every year he fired the bottom 10%. Right. That's the way What's I do your it. Oldest, how old is your oldest stuff? Like, is it like sourdough I, bread that there's always no, a No, I spent from... 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. I've been doing sucks in grade 10 years. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Do, I mean, I'm like, like, I grew up Woody Allen, Prince. I like short geniuses. Every year Woody <laughs> Allen has a new movie. Every year Prince has a new album. Right. A, a well, that's why I look at it like you're writing, a, you're writing a book. Uh -huh. And that's the way I look at it. Like, but Jerry's point is that stuff. when you go and see Prince, you want to see his greatest hits, not his new album no, you haven't heard. No, no, not your, necessarily. I want to see both. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. I want to see both. But I think if you leave then, out... Maybe today I want to see the hits, but there was a moment there from... There was a 20-year period in Prince's career where I just wanted the new shit. I couldn't wait for this. Well, you know what I always think? think is that if people if people come and see you, because there's you know, I have an ongoing relationship with my audience, I think, and I, a lot of people come back to see me. If if somebody right. sees you on TV doing a special and they see the stuff they love, and then they come see you live and they see it live, they'll actually be happy. Right. But they won't come back again. They'll go. I know what that guy does. If they come and see you live after the special and it's completely different. Yeah, I don't well, know where that's going to come again. Chris and I have had. Are they coming to see you or are they coming to see the act? They're coming to see you. Well, yeah, they're they're absolutely so. coming also, to see Of course, right. but this All level, of course material. they are. They're, they're, they're not coming to, 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 to discuss the evolution of the, you know, the comedy. They're coming to see Jerry Seinfeld, aren't they? they, want a, they it's an event. Yeah, but them. I think Louis right. If they see the exact same thing, then they won't come Those back again. Those people will not come again. Yeah. But well, also, the, the, the challenge of that, of like, there's a huge amount of pressure. People are coming, they paid a lot of money, they had to park, and they got in a fight with their date or whatever it is. So there is a lot of... You know, there, there's a huge challenge in not having your old act, but I think you rise to the occasion. You don't rise to the occasion if you don't put a, put the void there. Right. If you well, take away your old material from yourself, like one thing I started doing when I was developing hours is I'd take my closing bit and I'd open with it. Right. Just to fuck myself. Just right. Because then right. I have to follow my strongest bit. That's how he got good. You see this attitude? I, and then I, my you know, closing he's a bit with guy. I've been watching him. Yeah. He's a tough well, because then the end of your act cauterizes it. It gets stronger right. just because you have because you don't have a choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> cauterizes. So Why I started doing that? You get take get rid of all your best weapons, and you have to, you know, or else you're you're dead. But don't you think sometimes so it brings that, something out? When of we're you. discussing um, things like, oh, what do, what do the audience expect or what do they want? Don't there's something in me that says I don't care. It's not up to them. Uh, it's not yeah. up to them. I'll do exactly what I want, and that you know. Then you come yeah. and, if you if you didn't like it, I I, I don't care. Yeah, that's don't the, come and see me again. Don't <laughs> ever come and see me I again. I think as long that as your, I, I just don't want to be judged. Approach. I really don't want to be judged. Well, then you're in the wrong business. I completely. never wanted to what be. What do you the, mean though? Why? Well, you're, why? you're going up there to be. Ju no yeah. one is more judged in civilized society than the stand-up comedian. Every twelve seconds, you're rated. Yeah, that's right. But. That, yeah, that's the feedback. That's what it gives you. That they yeah. laugh or they don't. What I mean is, I'm not entering a competition. This is not. I'm not entering a popularity contest. You are entering. You, 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 you are entering a competition. No, I well, think no, Ricky, because yeah, no, but Ricky's no, got no. the right attitude as long as it works. In well, other words, it seems to be. In working. other words, he doesn't care, and that's funny to people, and that's making them laugh. Artic so it's okay. Yeah, Artistically, you're not no, entering no, no. a competition. Yeah. A, you're absolutely right, and you should write for yourself. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But when you play Radio City Music Hall or Madison Square Garden or whatever, you're competing with Led Zeppelin that was there the night before or, or Prince or well, whatever. Well, you're competing like, with you, something. You're competing with... To get sell those tickets. I mean, you, you have to get to a level to sell a certain number of tickets. I every mean, every room you're in, you're competing with the people that played that room, and you have to be at least as good 
as the other people what that I mean played is, that role. What yeah, I mean is, I don't, I don't change that? anything that I wouldn't want to do or have ever done <laughs> to find an audience. I do what I do, oh, and somewhere in the world, there's enough people that want to come and fill that venue. Absolutely. That's that. exactly right. It's like Darwinist, really, because you have your thing that you do, and then people flock to it. And if you don't, if they don't, they don't, and then you exactly. die. Remember the first time you met a, another kid that was funny? Yeah. That was a big it's deal. Was just so it's amazing. That was a big deal. I was in yeah. third grade. And I met a kid that was funny. And what was man, his name? Do you remember? Jimmy Tenney. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Tenney. <laughs> and we started making each other laugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't you remember kids that were like really funny, funnier than you? Oh, way oh, yeah, And sure. then you go off and you make this whole <laughs> career out of it. And they're going, fuck, I could have yeah. yeah. done that. Well, yeah. there's, you know, there's guys that beat Jordan bas in basketball. Right. <laughs> but you were, but I assume. They're out there. Yeah. You were always I mean, funny, I'm, weren't you? I mean, I was, always, I was always trying I to be funny. I thought everybody was funny. I only, like you said, I only hung out with the funny kids. Yeah. But my family were funny, all the friends, but that was the important thing. Yeah, when yeah, I grew up, right. if it, once you'd paid your way, the point was to have a laugh. Mm -hmm. And that was usually, you know, you know, ribbing people, you know, sort I of I ran play into fighting. one of my, one, there was a kid named Colin Ryan I went to junior high school with. And my first day of junior high school, you're, it's a very scary step to your, from yeah. elementary school. Uh, you know, from being like eating a lunch with a milk in the class, and then you're taking a shower with a bunch of kids. <laughs> like, first day of junior high school. And I'm in the shower, and I'm terrified, and I don't know anybody. And then this kid next to me, point, like, he just points and shows me that he's peeing on the kid next to him. Who has no idea, who's just wow. showering, wow. peeing all over him. And I just died laughing. <laughs> and he made me laugh that way a million times, and then... I went to my high school reunion and he was just kind of depressed looking guy right, now. Right. And I told him that story and I could see that the glimmer oh. was a little faded, but then he said, you know, somewhere that kid is walking around, he is, still doesn't know I peed on him. <laughs> I don't know what he does for a living, but it's he not pees on people still. <laughs> still Louis, <pees> on <laughs> Louis C.K. said this was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> is it funny? It's not funny right. now. <laughs> I don't want any fat people to feel uncomfortable at one of my gigs, so next time, buy two seats. I'm, I'm joking, I'm dead, I'm joking, shut up. I'm not having a go, I'm just pointing out, you know. I was listening to uh, the radio in England a few weeks back, Radio 4, quite highbrow, there was a discussion about political correctness, my name came up straight away, right? And there was this woman on there going, oh yeah, well it's, it's not right, um, uh, Ricky Gervais, um, he makes jokes about fat people, um, he wouldn't make jokes about gay people, would he? And being fat is like being gay. What? No it's not. What? <laughs> you can't choose your sexuality. As we've established, you choose whether to eat too much or not, you know. You're, with, with, with your sexuality, you're born, you grow up, you discover you like same-sex relationships, and that's it, you're gay, okay? For being gay to be the same as being fat, you'd have to be born, be straight, grow up knowing you're straight, but gradually and consciously wean yourself onto cock. But...
babies. In at home, just reading the newspaper. This little girl comes running in. She's only six. Hello, darling. Hello, daddy. You've been playing? Yeah. In the park? Yeah. With your friends? Well, until the man came along. Till the man came along? Yeah, a man came along and he asked my friends to leave, so it was just me and him. Darling, come, come over. Right. Whatever happened, none of it was your fault, okay, darling? None of it was your fault, but tell daddy every detail. What happened? Um, he took me behind a tree so no one could see what you were doing. Oh, God, darling, and then what happened? Um, he took my dress off. Oh, God, what happened next? What happened? Um, he took his thing out. Oh, God, darling, and then what happened? Nothing, that was it. Oh, well, make something up. He was the ringleader, old Adolf. That name's died out, hasn't it? <laughs> he killed that dead, didn't he? No one's calling their kid Adolf nowadays. No little Adolf's going to school. Loads of Brad's and Angelinas, but no, look, you don't hear the teacher doing the register. Brad here, Angelina here, Adolf here. Uh, <laughs> I'll do that quick so no one can take a picture of me doing that. Um, no, but people make excuses for him. People say, uh, uh, oh, he was stupid, he was easily led, he didn't, he didn't mean that. What do you mean he didn't mean that? They say, oh no, he was influenced by the political philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, right? Because Nietzsche wrote this paper um, talking about a, a superman. He, he said, not all men are born equal. And Hitler misinterpreted this and went way too far with it. And uh, <laughs> think of that. You're a great scholar. You've done this work, and you get a call from the Fuhrer. And the Fuhrer goes, all right, Nietzsche. Yes. Yeah, good, what do you want? He goes, just read your book. What do you think? Love it. <laughs> Love all that, man and Superman, not everyone's equal, kill all the Jews, sorry? <laughs> not everyone's equal, so kill all the Jews. I didn't like that. <laughs> I read between the lines. I, I, I didn't mean that. That's terrible. Have you, you, haven't been kill, you, you haven't been killing Jewish people, have you? What? <laughs> have you been killing Jewish people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A few. How many? <coughs> Six million. Six million? That's what I won't do anymore. Leave it. Leave it at six. That's terrible. I won't do anymore. Stay for dinner? Well, I will, but be careful in future. I will. Are you writing any other books? Well, I am, but I'm scared to tell you about it. I won't do anything. What's your new book called? My new book is called The Gypsies. Do we need them? We've come a long way from it being punishable to total equality as it should be of course in England the gauge of consent same as heterosexuality now um, 16 and even gay marriage um, although ironically the one place that was really ahead of the game fell behind a little at the last election California they had a referendum they put it to the vote and they voted no to gay marriage I mean in California there's people going that's why we moved here I mean it's a, <laughs> It's a strange sort of bigotry that you can affect someone else's lifestyle that doesn't affect you back. It's not like they asked a bloke once, said, sorry, um, do you mind if these two men get married? And he went, no, fine, okay, jack them off then. What? I didn't know that was... <laughs> that doesn't happen, does it? That doesn't happen. Look, it's also a strange sort of bigotry because these people that object to that were pr presumably the same people that said, you know, uh, gay people were immoral and promiscuous but now they don't want to be monogamous and respectful in the eyes of God and it must be so confusing to a gay guy in California thinking that's the bit they don't like with all the other shit we get up to it's the marriage bit that must so confused they must go to the judges and go sorry can I get the rules straight what do you want to know I just need to know what we can and can't do ask away can I marry a man no can I fuck him up the arse and give him a little reach round <laughs> please <laughs> I can't marry him. No. But I. I Can I? Can I pick up a stranger in the bushes 
and take him home and jizz on him and throw him out in the morning, all crusty and homeless. <laughs> of course you can, yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't marry him, no. And, no, and don't ask again. Uh, could I line up 15 men? I'm just riffing here. <laughs> could I line up 15 men and just jack them off for a laugh? <laughs> if you want, yeah, yeah. It would be difficult, wouldn't it? Jacking off 15 men at once. It would be like plate spinning, <laughs> wouldn't it? No, because you'd have, you could only do two at once, really, so you'd have these two ready to blow, but then they'd be losing it, and you'd go, oh, fucking hell. Oh, there you go. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Ain't it knackering, jacking off 15 men at once? <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. Oh.